There is a process to becoming a dominant team. Champions do consistently what others do occasionally. Keep playing. They want to play bully ball. We the bully. Keep playing. We the bully. You just don't become a dominant team and a championship competing team. You have to go through these experiences and you have to go through some pain. I'm going to soul search because I'm going to get us going. I didn't get us going. This is a long, hard process. And I know we're going to have a great offseason. There's going to be more of an emphasis on finishing because we didn't finish the year the right way. We didn't finish the season the right way. So it's just so fitting that we're in this weight room right now because there's going to be some more finishing done in this weight room in the offseason. There's going to be some more finishing on the field in the offseason. And, and we're going to be a better team in 25 than we were in 24. Although JCSU football fell short of the CIAA championship game, an 8-2 overall record, had the Golden Bulls in the mix for a spot in the NCAA Division II football playoffs. Good evening and welcome to the 2024 Division II football selection show as we begin the single elimination process to identify our 2024 champion. Virginia Union will be the opponent. The Panthers in the tournament for a third straight season and 12th time overall. Fresh off back-to-back -back CIAA championships, the team now seeks its first win in tournament history against that red hot defense. West Alabama will play a home game this coming weekend. Back to the tournament for the first time since 2018 and one of the more opportunistic teams this season in the Gulf South. It's a big play defense that paced the conference in red zone defense and had a knack for key turnovers in key moments this year. And they welcome the last team in this region. Hello to Lenore Ryan. <laughs> and just like that, the Golden Bull season was over. And while an 8-2 finish is one of the best in school history, the biggest takeaway from JCSU's 2024 football season is that the expectations in Charlotte have truly shifted. And a program that will normally just be happy to have back-to-back -back winning seasons is heading into the offseason with the bad taste of opportunities missed. As the Golden Bulls 8-0 start, proved that Smith has the pieces in place, to be one of the top teams in not just the CIAA, but in all of Division II football. Well, as I just think about the season, there were so many firsts for JCSU football and our university. I still haven't comprehended everything. As we started this journey, well, in January of 22, to be where we currently are, to finish a season at eight and two, and to have done so many things, it's just a sense of accomplishment, uh, fulfillment, but also, uh, a hunger that's stirring because although we have made so many gains, there's still a good ways to go. They don't give out rings and championships in September. But you know what? Congratulations. Yeah, you know. And here's the thing though, as I'm looking around, we're happy, but we're not surprised. We're not surprised. Proud of you. Proud of you. Here's the thing. We just ready to go through CIAA play, one game at a time. This does a lot for us. Proud of you, men. Proud of you. Proud of you, but you just, just, you just go to work, man. And you don't complain about anything. You stood up for something, and what we said when we started this journey in 22, we want to bring some respect on Johnson C. Smith University's name. Exactly. And you don't get the respect by beating those that ain't won a lot, but damn it, when you beat the damn defending CIAA yeah. champ. We do realize that it's been 1969 and 1970 that JCSU football has had back-to-back -back seasons with at least seven wins. That's 55 years. And so to do it as fast as we've done it and now to have the expectation that you're going to compete to win, it's, it's really a lot to swallow. To, to be at this point and you're eight and two and you can say, well, maybe that's enough, but it's not enough. It's, it's not enough. And our young men, I'm so proud of them because there were so many things that were thrust upon them. Uh, you know, we, we never sat down and said, hey, we're just gonna sit back and make history every time we go out and play. You don't do that. You know, we, our goal has been to let's get better every day. 
Let's, let's our goal, one of our sayings is everything every day. Let's just do the right thing and see where it goes. And so that's what we were stuck in. Let's just be good in practice. Let's be good in practice. Let's be good in the classroom. Let's be good in study hall, meetings, everything that has to do with could be the final product on the field. Let's be good at it. And that's where the, the concentration has been. And then you look up and you're 3-0. You're four and zero, and then all of a sudden you hear that you're five and zero, and it hadn't been done in this amount of time. You're six and zero, and it hadn't been done in this amount of time. And then you get ranked in the top 25 for the first time in school history. You're featured on College Game Day three times. Come on, that where does that happen for a D2 HBCU? And then when you get to the end, and then you lose, and you lose to your rival, uh, it, you just look at there's so many things that come with winning that our program hadn't seen before. You know, we have to make the transition from going from the hunter to being the hunted. And that is a very big transition. When you're 8-0, no, you're everybody's Super Bowl, and you gotta bring that every game, man. Every play. I just heard Coach Flowers over there say, every play is the big play. Man, every play is the big play. When you're 8-0, no, there's certain things that come with that. And that means you are everybody's Super Bowl. You see them celebrating, you see them doing all the bullshit, you see it. They season rides on beating you. They ain't doing shit else this year. They season rides on beating you. And you gotta accept it. And you gotta take that, and you gotta go out there and play your best half of football this year. Your best half of football this year. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. And with the 2024 season already in the rear view, the focus now shifts to recruiting and managing the realities of the transfer portal. We always say we want guys that want to be a golden bull. And with the way that college football is today, you know, the transfer portal, it, it works two ways. You have guys that come into your program, but you also have guys that leave your program. So uh, we'll have some, what we call end of season exits before the semester ends. Young men and their families have to make decisions that they feel are best for them. And we, as the coaching staff and myself as the head, I have to make the decisions that we feel are best for the program. And with that, we look at development, uh, you know, young guys developing, are they developing the way that we feel that they need to and what else can we do? Because the last thing we want to do is have this as a revolving door program. And we've done an outstanding job. I, I want to say in our years here, in our three years here, we've had less than 10 young men hit the portal. So young men love being here. And you having been around and see it, you can get the feel for us. You don't make these gains by bringing in 30, 40, 50, 60 new guys every year. You know, you can feel that there's a bond, there's a love, and there's a true caring for one another, and that's because of the way that we function. And the biggest holes to fill for JCSU football in 2025 will be at linebacker. As the Golden Bulls look to replace HBCU Legacy Bowl attendees Jack Smith and Bernari Black. Brick by brick, day by day, we compete. One team, one team, one mind, one mind, one goal, one goal. One goal. Be willing to die down that field, stay the f back. Just that simple. Play ball. You got it. Yeah. Let's go. You see me smiling. You see me smiling. First of all, I'm smiling for two reasons. The first is because Benari Black did so much for our program. He's a Charlottean, West Charlotte High School, and Benari's been a starter for us for three years. Two-time, first-team All-CIAA selection. This year, Defensive Player of the Year, Legacy Bowl selection. Then, right beside him, his roommate, Jack Smith, comes to us from Division I program, three-year starter. It's two years in a row that he's been second team all CIAA and a legacy bowl selection. And these are the two young men that were spearheaded a defense that's been tops in the country for two straight years. So that's the one reason I'm smiling. Love that these young men are getting ready to graduate. And then the next reason I'm smiling is because we replaced Bernari Black with a young man named Kavaris Crouch. <laughs> Kavaris Crouch was number one player in the country, which we all know, played linebacker in the SEC at Tennessee and then transferred to Michigan State. Uh, what Kavaris Crouch did is a sacrifice to the team and to get him back in the swing of football this year is unprecedented. He went to running back where linebacker was his natural position. And the sacrifice he did for the team is amazing. And he went through an injury plagued season. After game five, you didn't really see him much. So really a frustrating season for him, but he's just glad to be back in the swing of football. And so when you replace an All-American type linebacker like Benari Black with a Kavaris Crouch, you know you're doing the right thing and you've got the right people on campus and in the program. When you watch him on the field of linebacker, he's a different guy. Uh, Division II football in the CIAA won't have seen uh, a football player like 
Kavars Krause when he's playing at linebacker. And as we take one final look back at the Brick by Brick saga of season two, we can bookmark this as the year JCSU made the college football world, put some respect on his name, and reclaim the Bulls down gesture to let people know that when you mess with these Golden Bulls, you must definitely go get the horn. But when I look back at this team, I see a resilient group and a hungry group. And when I say resilient, it's, it's resiliency of having a bunch of years of non-winning football on your back and just to fight every single day. And the hunger to be the team in a conference and, and to make a splash in Division II football. That's what I'll look back and think uh, of a school that has been totally irrelevant in Division II football, been a laughing stock, been, been a homecoming opponent, been a, a team where you can just look at and say, oh, that's a win. Uh, a team that has been that in the past to say that this is a team that really started making people think differently about Johnson C. Smith University and the football program. I I'm so proud of them and it's still kind of fresh on me, but I know that, that this will be one of the things that I look back on and say is one of the, the biggest accomplishments in, in my coaching career. These are guys that came here when, when the grass was on the game field. You know, these are guys that bought into that, that lifted in a weight room that couldn't fit but 20 people at one time. These were guys that were, that started off getting in a, you know, getting dressed in a locker room that had been in place since the 1960s. Guys that believed that change was coming and that they were part of the change. That's, that's gonna be special. As we move forward to a 25 season where we look to be, to continue building on, upon this, from this season and where we, where we've been and it's, uh, it's a great place. Woo! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Wale. As we always say, go Golden Bulls.